Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus said to his disciples, I say this to you who are listening. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who treat you badly. We need love in our hearts to be able to put these words into practice, the love of God and the love of neighbor. Jesus also said, treat others as you would like them to treat you. There are some people who hate their enemies, who wish evil upon them who close their hearts to them. And it's as if some people would be happy to hear a sentence of condemnation, condemning their enemies to the very fires of hell. Jesus said, love your enemies. I'd like to read the extraordinary account of the life of Venerable Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres, who gave a remarkable example of living today's gospel in such a heroic way. The lives of the saints are wonderful examples and lessons that can inspire us and move our hearts to desire to become like Jesus. In the life of Venerable Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres, who was a Spanish conceptionist nun, we read how she saved the life of a rebellious nun who persecuted her. She saved the soul of this nun who would have gone to hell had it not been for Mother Mariana accepting to suffer five years of the pains of hell in order to give this rebellious nun an opportunity to change and to come back to life again after she died. We are speaking about something very extraordinary. And we can use this episode to show how far some people's love will go to save souls. The rebellious nun was actually under the influence of the devil and was being moved by pride and envy. Mother Mariana herself explains what happened, saying, I quote, I saw that this unhappy nun and several of her followers would not be saved. But, well aware of my unbounded love for souls, our Lord appeared to me and proposed the unimaginable There was but one way to save this soul from the eternal flames of hell that she well deserved for her many sins and the harm caused to the community. This way was for me to agree to suffer five years in hell for her. End quote. Mother Mariana trembled to her very core, but she accepted There was a point when this rebellious nun was actually possessed and Mother Mariana was able to free the unhappy nun from the demons, telling them, all your efforts to snatch my sister's soul will be in vain. Jesus Christ died for her. In spite of you, she will be saved. I command you, leave and never more return to torment any of my sisters with your abominable presence. Then the devils were gone. Mother Mariana recounts how I quote, On returning to her senses, the sick nun was very embarrassed. 
she spent a terrible night suffering the cruelties of a criminal conscience. Still, envy had such a hold on her heart that she could not bring herself to ask pardon of me, much less bring herself to love me. She had a contagious disease and was very sick. Feeling herself dying, she cried in a terrible agitation, It is too late for me. I cannot love her nor forgive her. I want to be saved but cannot. A priest was called, but she would not confess. The priest left, saddened by this scene of dying impenitence. She then breathed her last, end quote. So she died without confessing her sins. Then Mother Mariana told her sisters, do not forget my sacrifice I was accepted to save this soul. Pray to God fervently for her. She is now before the judgment seat of God and she has realized all the evil she has done. She will live again. Do not be frightened. Remain calm because she will repent and amend. Later, she will die and be saved, but her purgatory will last to the judgment day, which means until the end of time. This the Lord has revealed to me. After saying this, the dead nun's body quivered and she opened her eyes. She looked all around the room as if seeking someone. Then, fixing her eyes on me, she wanted to speak, but her voice choked in a torrent of tears. I dried them with a mother's love and spoke to her words of confidence in the goodness of God. The poor creature finally felt how much she was loved. After a general confession, she slowly began to recover. She was now as docile as a child and never wanted to be away from me. Mother Mariana then tells us that some time later, our Lord appeared to me. He reminded me that the time had come for me to pay the price for the salvation of that nun's soul. I was to remain five years in the state of a damned soul. My soul suffered all the torments of the damned. My five bodily senses were steeped in an incredible torture. We don't have time to go into all the details of what she suffered. Five years later, my hell was over. Not long after, the nun who she suffered for fell sick once again and approached her end. She confessed all her sins and died calmly, assisted by Holy Mother Church. Mother Mariana tells us, I, Mother Mariana, saw the sister's judgment, where she was shown that her salvation was owed to my five years in hell. She carried this immense gratitude with her to eternity. And then she, we are told that in purgatory, she was helped much by Mother Mariana, who did not cease to pray for her. That's from the life of Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres. What about us, dear brothers and sisters? Are we willing to suffer to save souls, to save the souls of our enemies? Do we want our enemies to save their soul, or do we want them to go to hell? We probably won't be asked to suffer the pains and torments of hell for five years, like Mother Mariana, in order to save the soul of the person who hates us and persecutes us. But Jesus is asking us to pray for them, to do good to them, to love them. And through love in our hearts, we can offer an abundance of prayer and sacrifices for them. Dear brothers and sisters, it is very hard for us to forgive because we hold on to the wounds that we've received. We do not want to let go. We do not want to move on. We are offended. We are still upset. And we hold on to resentment. And if we're not careful, 
we will even despise and hate the people who have wronged us. We know that this is not how we are meant to be and we should not have these feelings within our hearts. So what are we going to do about it? We have to humble ourselves and go to the Blessed Virgin Mary like a little child and say, Mother, I cannot bring myself to forgive. I need your help. Help me to love this person. Help me to pardon them. My heart is closed and it will not let go. I need you to open up my heart and I am in need of your grace. Please, Blessed Mother, help me. If we are able to go on our knees and plead for help, we can hope that at some stage the grace will be given to us. We have to want this grace. And we can start to dispose ourselves to receive it by praying for our enemies, by placing them in the Immaculate Heart of Mary, by placing also our sorrow and our affliction into the heart of our mother. So that through the sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary, we can be healed from our wounds and start again. The Virgin Mary, the Mediatrix of all graces, she was the secret of Mother Mariana's perseverance. Let us live the words of the gospel. Put it into practice in order to become truly blessed. And you will also become wise if you know how to love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who treat you badly. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.